All right, with this video, let's introduce you to some of the main drawing and painting tools we're going to be using for most of the projects. Since this is a digital illustration class, these are the most important tools that you need to be aware of. Now, Photoshop can do a lot of different drawing abilities in them, and some of these you'll use more often than others. But the main drawing tools can be found underneath your brush tool. The brush and the pencil tool are the two tools that I use the most often for most of my digital illustrations. Some of these have more advantages than others. Really, the brush tool is kind of my workhorse tool. Now, underneath here, there's also the color replacement and even the mixer brush tool. They look very similar, but they do some different things. And those are mostly used for the color replacement in replacing colors in uh, photographs that you want to recolor. The mixer brush tool is a very powerful painting tool. It is a little bit newer. I don't use it as often because I find I get most control just using my brush tool. Do be aware that you know what tool you have selected. Some of these tools look very similar, and so if I ask you to have the brush tool, make sure you don't accidentally pick the mixer brush tool. So I'm going to choose my brush tool. I've got a nice little blank canvas that I can work on, and with this I can click and drag and get an idea of how I'm painting. Notice that the color that I'm painting with will always be this foreground color swatch. Now I do have two different color swatches. This background color comes in handy for loading up a secondary color. So let's say I wanted to have some blue selected with it, but it doesn't necessarily mean I can automatically paint with that blue color. If I wanted to use it, I need to swap it over. I can either press this little arrow to swap it out. Now I can paint with blue, or I can choose my keyboard shortcut of X, and X will swap between these two colors. Very often you'll see me go back and forth using those two different ones, especially if I wanted to go back to default of black and white. I can paint with this and then swap over to white and almost erase it away, or actually I'm painting white on top of here. By the way, if you need to quickly uh, clear everything away on your board, you can always do Shift and Delete. That'll allow you to fill in your background, in this case with white, and it'll be completely gone from here. Let's keep exploring these brush tools. The first thing you need to know is how to change up the size of your brush. Remember, when you have the brush selected, you get all of your options. With this drop-down menu, here's the size of my brush. Now, brushes are usually measured in pixels, and so when I scroll over, you can see the size of my brush gives me a little preview there. If I increase the size of it, the size of the brush will be increased here. Of course, if I decrease it, it'll get smaller with this. Smaller size brushes will give you more detail, whereas a larger brush will fill in a larger area. The other neat thing underneath it is the hardness of the brush. Now, right now, my hardness is set to 0%, and you can see the area outside of it is very, very feathered. Having a soft edge brush like this is good for blending in multiple colors. But if I wanted to give it a nice harder edge, I'll pull up to 100%, that's what this would look like when I paint for here. So notice the difference between these two, a soft edge and a hard edge brush. And then you can go back up here and choose something in between for both of those. The other thing you can do, and this isn't true for all of your brushes, is sometimes you can adjust the outline or the shape of your brush. So if I wanted to have a more calligraphic style, and get it to look like this, and then it would paint more like this. We'll get into these once we start customizing our brushes. For the most part, I always just keep it 100% back at the default. We'll bring this down to down there. The next thing to know underneath this drop down menu is you've got a variety of different brushes that come preloaded into Photoshop. Now, you can add more brushes to this, but if you open up the general brush, you can see these are the general settings for your rounded brushes. These first two have a default soft and a hard round one. This one is a pressure sensitive soft and hard brush. Now if I choose it, and especially if I use my tablet, it'll pick up on the pressure sensitivity. So notice that if I didn't choose it, if I chose this regular one, my tablet doesn't pick up on that pressure sensitivity. And then there's some pressure sensitivity that will change up the opacity and the flow of these as well, based on how much or how little I change that up. Let's get rid of everything. Shift, delete, and fill that in with white, and we'll start over. Now, underneath your general brushes, you've got a variety of other different brush folders. 
With these, these are some different kinds of brushes that tend to mimic real world artistic uh, media. Things like pencils, charcoal, uh, even pastels, all the different kinds of things. These are a lot of fun and this is what we're going to be covering within our second unit that talks about customizing your brushes. When you choose these, notice that they also have a little icon next to them. This simply means that you can only use this style of brush with this particular tool. In this case, it's the brush tool. If I scroll down, you can see this brush can only be used with the eraser tool. The eraser tool, the pencil tool, the brush tool all have the same kind of functionality. Let's look at some other ones. So wet media, here's one that's used with a smudge tool. Here's one that's used with a mixer brush tool. So if I wanted to use this uh, classic cartoonist brush with this one, I can open it up. I can change the size of this brush and I can get a feel for how it looks. Hey, that actually looks kind of neat. It looks like a classic little cartoonish and it doesn't have a nice hard edge and instead it has this kind of rough edge to it. Now, if I was to choose this other brush, this wet box, wet blender, this is going to swap from my paintbrush tool, check out my toolbox, to a little mixer brush or a smudge brush tool. With this one, I can go in and I can start to smudge out different areas. It doesn't work like a regular paintbrush, like I can't add more paint, but I can smudge around some of the existing paint that's here. That gives us a nice artistic effect. If I chose another one, this will pick up my mixer brush tool, and I'll start to blend and mix in the colors that are there as well. The main takeaway from this is that pay attention to the outer edge of this. If it has a tool already set to this, then it'll automatically pick up the tool. Or if I go back to my general brushes, you can see this doesn't have a tool, and so I can use it on multiple different tools, whether I'm on my regular brush or my mixer brush as well. The final thing you can do is you can add other brushes to here. You can play around with some of the special effects brushes, but if you want to add some more, you can go up to the top brush here. I like to add in some of the legacy brushes. These are some of the older style brushes that came with uh, Photoshop when it was first installed and first part of it. So to add these brushes, I'm going to choose legacy brush. It's going to ask me, hey, do you want to restore those and add it? We'll say yes. And now you can see there's another folder that's added to here. When I open it up, there's even some subfolders. And let's go to some of these really fun, uh, almost there's calligraphic brushes, natural brushes. Ah, these are looking good here. So from here, I can choose these and I can start to play around and work with all of those. Let's make it larger. And I can draw with that. Now, some of these I do use a little bit more often than others, and these are the kind of things to play around with and to just to see what they do. Another way you can add brushes is by finding them from a variety of different websites. If you open this up, now if you have your own Photoshop, uh, or excuse me, Adobe account, you can go to Get More Brushes, and this will take you to Adobe's website. From here, once you um, sign in, you can download some of these other little packs of brushes that will mimic other kinds of media and allow you to work with those. Just keep in mind, you need to have an existing Adobe account to download these particular brushes, or you can find them from another source to download and install from there. Again, we'll talk a little bit more about creating and customizing brushes in a different unit. The other thing to pay attention to, let's go back up to our options. I'm going to go back to just my general default brush, hard edge, is to know a good keyboard shortcut for changing the size of your brush. Of course, you can change the size of it here, or you can use your bracket keys. The bracket keys are located next to the P on your keyboard. Whoops. We'll close that out. And if I needed to make my brush um, much, much smaller, I can do my close or excuse me, open bracket key. You can see it'll increment down in steps of five or larger using my close bracket key. So on the fly, if you see me making my brush larger or smaller, that's what I'm using. I'm using those bracket keys. If I wanted to make my brush have a softer edge, this is where I can do shift, open and close. You can pay attention up here and see this getting harder or softer doing shift, open and close bracket key. So on the fly, I've got some great little keyboard shortcuts to be able to use those and paint with those as well. Let's clear away our area. The next thing to pay attention to is what drawing mode you're working in. 
Now, mode depends on how your colors are blending with each other. For the most part, I'm never going to move it past normal. I'm always going to paint in normal mode. But if you did have like a color selected, let me show you what this would do. Painting normal keeps it at 100%. But if I chose something like multiply, I still have that color red, but watch as it blends on top of this. It's actually getting darker as I paint for here. Now this isn't a normal way I like to paint. Sometimes you can actually do some really funky stuff like opposite and it'll paint and give you some really cool results working with those. But the mode that I like to work in is normal because it gives me the exact results that I'm looking for. The other thing you can do is change the opacity of your brush. Right now by default it's painting 100% red, but if I was to drop this down to say about 50%, you can see now it's painting 50% opacity and then I can build up and actually blend in colors much better. Very often I'll drop the opacity of a brush in order to easily blend colors or to make things look a little bit more uh, transition a little bit better as well. A good keyboard shortcut to know about the opacity is you can use your number keys at the top of your keyboard to jump in increments of 10. So if I want to get 20%, I can type 2. If I wanted to jump up to 60%, I can type the 6. It goes all the way up to there or 100%, I can type the zero and you'll get those. Flow works very similarly. So with flow, I can keep my opacity at 100%, but I can drop this down and I can paint that and it'll paint on slower. This usually works better if I've got one of my textured brushes. So let's see if I can find one of these nice little texture drawing brushes. Let's go for the wet media and I'll do this classic cartoonist. So right now, if my flow is set to, we'll bring it all the way down really, really small. Whoops, got off key here. We'll set my flow really small, bring my opacity back up to 100%. Now when I start to paint at a smaller opacity or a smaller flow, we'll zoom into there. Eh, there we go. This is the flow of this brush brought down really, really low. You can see how it takes a long time for it to build up versus if I was to bring my flow up a little bit more to 20%, it goes on very quickly, flow up a little bit more to 100%, goes to 100% with this. So flow and opacity, think of flow as like working with an airbrush or a spray paint can. The more flow you have, the faster it comes out of the can, the slower the flow, the slower it comes out, but it still comes out at 100%. The final thing to turn on, let's go back to my just my normal default brush, is the smoothing of this. By default, I usually keep my smoothing set to, uh, set to zero. This means whatever I paint automatically follows my brush. Let's make my brush a little bit smaller so we can see it. Automatically follows my brush. I can get lots of little details, but if I increase my smoothing number, let's bring it up to something drastic like 100%, this will cause my lines to go much smoother, a little bit slower, and it's a little bit harder to do small details. So if I wanted to draw a straight, smooth line, I can bring up my smoothing. This comes in handy if you're doing cartoonish style drawings and you want those nice, smooth edges. Or if you want to do something more detailed, bring your smoothing way down, and that'll give you much more control over this one. Finally, there's lots of other little things. The main two things to look at are to control your pressure sensitivity for both the size and the opacity. By default, if your brush doesn't have pressure sensitivity like this one does, let's see, I'll back out and we'll put this back up there. We'll delete it away. If I wanted to draw without pressure sensitivity, whatever I draw with keeps it the same size. If I was to turn this icon on, that will automatically turn on pressure sensitivity for that brush. So if your brush isn't pressure sensitive by default, this is where you can turn it on. Now that's for the size of your brush. This one is for the opacity of your brush. This means when I start to paint, if I was to do a little bit of pressure, it's lower opacity. As I hold down, more pressure gets higher opacity. So this is a great way to quickly blend that in by turning on that pressure sensitivity. Very rarely do I do both of them at the same time. Usually I keep pressure sensitivity on just for the size of my brush. 
and I like to use my keyboard shortcuts to adjust the opacity or the flow of my brush from there as well. So that's the basics of setting up and using all of your brushes and working within your brushes. Start playing around with the size and what each of the different brushes will do. The other thing to play around with is working in pencil mode. Now pencil mode works just like your brushes. The only thing about it is make sure you're not choosing some of these. This is where I like to use those legacy brush is under pencil mode. You don't have the nice hard edge, everything, or excuse me, a soft edge. Everything is meant to be a hard edge. And so if I was to use, let's say this, um, let's do this rounded fan brush. Ooh, that's kind of cool. It's going to give me a look and feel that looks kind of like this and works well stippling on with this one. Now this particular brush, mimics this particular style of brush and sometimes it gives you a preview of it up here. Very rarely do I use these. Usually I like to turn that preview off so I can see exactly what I'm working with. Again, once we get into creating brushes, we'll go into a lot more details of what they can do. So if you haven't done so already, you got your tablet installed, start playing around with brushes and what they can do for you. The next thing we're going to do is to put this into practice and actually start to create a painting with the brushes that you have.